Hello, this is the RPG Crawler, and welcome to another product review. And yes, it's another entry into the Goodman Games Original Adventures Reincarnated series, where they convert classic modules into 5th edition rules. They include expanded material, as well as background articles and content regarding the module's history. I have covered the prior four entries, and if you've watched those videos, it'll be no surprise that I've actually grown to really love this series. While definitely not perfect, each entry has been impressive in its own way. And while each release includes largely the same things, background articles and history, a reprint of the original module, a conversion of the module to 5th edition, as well as expanded material, each of the releases has also had some slight changes from prior entries. Some of these changes are necessary due to the original module's material, while some are just a natural evolution of the series. As far as Castle Amber, it is a reprint and conversion of a module by Tom Moldvay. Originally released back in 1981 for the Expert set, it is a module that takes direct inspiration from the works of Clark Ashton Smith to the point of actually including the province of Averonia. And I'm probably going to mispronounce that several times in several different ways throughout this. And that was initially by permission from the Clark Ashton Smith estate. It features a bit of a mix of classic funhouse style dungeon crawling with a touch of haunted house style horror. By all rights, I should have been a fan of this module from way back when, but I gotta be honest. I actually have had very limited exposure to this until reading through this product for this review, so this has been quite an interesting read for me. Anyway, as usual, I will take a look at the physical makeup of the book, give a summary of the contents, and then present most of my thoughts on the matter at the end. So let's dive right in. Castle Amber, the fifth volume of the original Adventures Reincarnated series, is a hardback of just under 270 pages with mostly black and white interior, save for a couple full-color versions of the cover. The interior covers new art based on the module itself, as well as original works of Clark Ashton Smith, and there are a couple of gatefold pages within that fold out to present the interior maps as they were in the original module. Physically, it is as well put together in the, as the prior versions with the sort of crisp, stitch fold binding that you saw in the immediately prior versions with a ribbon bookmark. The interior print, at least where it isn't part of the original direct scan reprint of the module itself, is relatively easy to read with occasional black and white illustrations in line, relatively large text, and just basically a layout that brings it into line with similar Goodman Games products. The scan of the original is about as good as I've seen in this particular series, with the interior art well presented and clean, and the text also well presented. The scan of, you know, it's there were only two original printings of Castle Amber, and they were near identical except for publication numbers. So this volume really only includes one version. At least from that perspective, Original Adventures Reincarnated, Castle Amber, meets the expectations set by prior entries in the series. So let's actually just take a look at the contents. The volume is split into ten chapters and six appendices. Chapter one is the introductory material and background articles. Chapter 2 is the reprint of the original Castle Amber publication, while the rest includes the new content. Chapter 3 starts the background material on the new conversion. Chapter 4 details the west wing of the estate. 5, the indoor forest. And then 6, the chapel area. Chapter 7 covers the east wing of the estate. Chapter 8 deals with the dungeon area below it. And Chapter 9 covers the province of Averonia, taken from the Clark Ashton Smith stories itself. Chapter 10 covers the finale in the Tomb of Stephen Amber. As far as the appendices go, Appendix A details the new monsters presented in the adventure. Appendix B details the members of the Amber family themselves. 
Appendix C details the quote-unquote new magic items. Appendix D includes the hunting lodge, which is a new mini dungeon to insert into the setting as needed. Appendix E covers the various art and handouts. And F includes the new maps. In detail, the introductory chapter is where the series places background and in interesting scholarly articles regarding the module in question. As Tom Moldvay is no longer with us, and this is actually the original, the second original Adventures Reincarnated module to feature one of his adventures, most of the material here this time focuses on Castle Amber's association with the works of Clark Ashton Smith. It begins with a general introduction from Michael Curtis, then a more specific look at Clark Ashton Smith's influence, also by Michael Curtis, and then there's an article on the funhouse nature of the chateau, also by Michael Curtis. James Malachewski then picks up to look at the various specific tales that influenced Castle Amber, which is followed by an article on James Malachewski's personal history with the module. Tim Wojcinski then chimes in with his experience with the original, and then there's a quick note from Doug Kovacs about how the new original art on the inside front cover was made and what it took inspiration from. Chapter 2 is where you start with the original adventure. There were two printings of Castle Amber, as I mentioned before, with the only real differences being things like the ISBN and product number placement. So there's effectively only one necessary to see, so only a single scan for the original printing is concluded. As far as the original adventure itself, free, feel free to skip this part if you want to avoid spoilers, although they will be gone into uh, later in, the, in this particular video, so you're probably just kind of out of luck there. Castle Amber revolves around the castle of the Amber family, a previously known as the de Ambervilles, that were transported from the mythical French province of Averonia from some of Clark Ashton Smith's stories. Deposited in Mistara, or the known world at that time, they created a sort of insular castle in Glantry. The party, seeking rumors regarding a Prince of Glantry looking for brave adventurers, gets swept away during their travel and deposited in front of the Grand Chateau. A strange mist keeps them from leaving, and they are left to try to explore the chateau and find a way to return to their world. The adventure consists of two major wings of the chateau, flanking a central indoor forest area. There's also an adjoining chapel and a dungeon beneath. Characters explore the chateau, encountering the various strange and unstable members of the Amber family, only to find that they must break the curse of Stephen Amber to exit the chateau. This requires them to travel through a mystical gate to the land of Averonia, where the Ambers came from, find three magical items, and then use them to summon the tomb of Stephen Amber. Only then can they undo the curse and return to their world. While the Amber family itself is an original creation for the module, some characters encountered, especially in the land of Averonia, are adapted directly from the stories of Clark Ashton Smith. The actual adventure is presented similarly to how they were in prior volumes, with scans of the original module, with the original page numbers listed at the bottom, set in a footer with the information from the overall volume itself. There is, as I mentioned before, a, a gatefold foldout at the very beginning that includes the interior map of Castle Amber, a print of the original interior cover, and then on the other side, basically, artwork pertaining to the module itself and the introductory material. Contents proceed from there. Uh, there is an introduction to the adventure itself, guidelines on running the adventure, and a background of the Amber family. Then it goes directly into the adventure details. The key is in a typical style of the era, with each room clearly described with boxed text. There's DM notes on what happens within that room, and monster stat blocks and treasure are given in line. At the end of the adventure is actually a uh, more detailed group of monster stats and stat blocks, followed by a pronunciation guide, which will go ahead and tell you how to pronounce things, and um, which I have pretty much failed to memorize for this, so get used to me mispronouncing things. Chapter 3 is where the 5th edition conversion starts. 
It contains rewritten, reworked versions of the background information from the original module, including advice for the party composition refitted for 5th edition stylings. There is a quick overview of the adventure and an effect that can grant the party uh, details for a safe long rest once the gaming session is underway so that you don't have to worry about finding places for the characters to rest. There's some talk about designing challenging encounters, similar to the mention in the original adventure, however, including rules and tables designed around 5th edition encounter design systems. An overview of the Amber family follows, and then there's the start of the adventure. The general details of the Chateau de Amberville follow, with details on doors, lighting, and more, and there's a sidebar that addresses the possibility of using a half-scale version, since the original maps had the floors in the standard 10-foot scale of old-school adventures, making some of the rooms ridiculously huge. The chapter concludes with the general wandering monsters table for use in the chateau proper, and then the pronunciation guide, which was moved from the end of the adventure, where it was in the original, up to this introductory section. Chapter 4 covers the West Wing. And I'm, going not, I'm not going to go into each and every encounter, but a few do stand out. There's the classic Grand Salon, where characters are invited to a boxing match, and then there's the dining hall where characters can gamble with their lives by eating the feast, potentially gaining permanent bonuses or joining the ghostly serving staff forever. There's various members of the Amber family to encounter throughout the chapter, and it also has a gatefold map of Castle Amber's ground floor, although it has been re-rendered in an isometric view rather than the original flat plan from the original adventure. One thing to note is that the original adventure only had one floor for most of the West Wing and the East Wing as well, but part of the expanded material in the original adventure's reincarnated version adds a second floor to each of the wings, and this is added seamlessly into each appropriate chapter. The additional rooms are very similar to the original ones in terms of theme, with a sort of demented funhouse feel to them. They use a variety of classic monsters that did not appear in the original adventure just to mix things up, and a few of the rooms added include living quarters for members of the family that weren't given their own rooms as of the original adventure, as well as a few new Amber family members to encounter, each with their own strange and sometimes frightening quirks. The maps for these new floors are also done in that isometric style, with both the east and west wing floors uh, basically uh, appearing in chapter 4, and you can refer back to them from the later chapter when it covers the east wing. Each one adds far more rooms than the initial ground floor, with the west wing adding just over 30 and the east wing adding just over 20. Chapter 5 covers the indoor forest, which was a primary hub in the original module. Sort of a massive greenhouse with a small forest inside of it, it includes its own wandering monster table and features, and although it is a single quote-unquote room of sorts, its encounter progression is limited by the density and danger of the trees themselves, encouraging parties to remain on the paths within. Chapter 6 covers the chapel, accessible via the forest. It includes a number of rooms dedicated to memorializing the Amber family, as well as a couple mad members thereof. This is a good place for characters to retrieve clues on just how to escape the chateau as well, and largely conforms to the original adventure in terms of its contents. Chapter 7 covers the East Wing, which encompasses all of the original ground floor encounters, plus more for the new second floor. There is at least one additional old-school spell, Charm Monster, that has been converted to 5th edition and placed in line in a sidebar to fit with one of the existing encounters. The second story includes not only new members of the family, but also additional ways for the party to get clues as to just what is needed to do to escape the chateau, on top of the original clues, which can make it a little bit easier for those more new-school players that expect a lot of stuff handed to them. There are also at least a few new references to events that will take place in Averonia itself as a sort of foreshadowing of what's to come. Chapter 8 is the Dungeon, which runs under the Chateau as a whole, accessible via the Chapel and the West Wing. It includes a few curious traps, puzzles, and encounters, including a large magical letter square that can permanently alter a character according to clues found elsewhere in the Chateau. 
There's a brain collector that serves as a sort of odd touch of eldritch horror, and an entrance to the land of ghouls, which is an entirely different area, not covered in the original module, and actually not expanded in this conversion, which I believe was maybe something of a missed opportunity, but I can see why they didn't do it if it's to become like its own massive thing. This is also where one finds the Gate of the Silver Keys, which is what is necessary for the party to enter the land of Averonia by taking a number of keys that they've gathered from the rest of the chateau and uh, using them to transport themselves. Chapter 9 covers the entire province of Averonia. It is a fictional province in France that served as the setting of a number of Clark Ashton Smith stories. And although those stories took place across centuries, the time frame has been compressed to just one section of the High Middle Ages for purposes of this module, although there is some time travel involved in at least one of the quests. In the original module, Averonia was not as scripted as out as the rest of the adventure, but was rather an open hex map with some settlements loosely described then individual locations pertinent to the main quest marked thereon, with guidelines on how to run each one. Some of these sections involved a lot of DM improv improvisation, and many of them were based on actual events in Clark Ashton Smith stories. The 5th edition version takes a similar track, starting with a general description of the province and the characters within. There is, interestingly enough, a sidebar about making Averonia a demiplane of dread, similar to Ravenloft, which I'll touch on in my analysis. There's also more details about the exact locations to look for that make up the Averonia cycle, in case the DM wants to read some of those stories to make, you know, a better representation of the province. The individual quests are much the same as they were in the original, although the write-ups are a bit more thorough, to say the least. Basically, the characters have to find and retrieve three magical items to summon the Tomb of Stephen Amber. Once uh, the one is a magical sword, the Sword of uh, Solaire, in this version, the actual realm of Solaire, separated by a portal of time from the rest of the province, is included semi-mapped out, expanding the quest from a simple few paragraphs to several pages of detail. The next item is the Viper Circled Mirror. Again, the quest to obtain it is expanded from a few paragraphs to multiple pages, and it includes a new map of the city of Vion, which is not included in the original adventure. The final item, the Ring of Ibon, is also expanded into a couple of pages of adventure, and the city of Paragon is detailed out with its own map as well. There is a potion of time travel that needs to be acquired, and it can be acquired in a few places, although getting it from the Dark Bishop Azedarak has been expanded to a few linked events for the occasion that the players may seek to get it from him. A few other locations in Averonia have been expanded as well, although not to the full extent that the prior sections have been. There's a few additional optional sections added in order to expand upon the feel of the province and to give more opportunities for sidetracks and adventures. The last main chapter, Chapter 10, deals with the Tomb of Stephen Amber. This is the grand finale of the adventure, just a nine-room tomb that is summoned with a ritual involving the three prior items. It's got a nice new isometric map that actually is a little bit more useful in showing the details of a few rooms than the original 2D one, considering some of the elemental rooms. For instance, there is the air room that has a path of clouds that go over a straight drop. This part of the adventure basically consists of throwing the party against increasingly difficult guardian monsters until they reach the middle where Stephen Amber himself lies. Upon releasing his spirit from the tapestry in which it is bound, he rewards the party and allows them to exit. In that, the chapter is pretty much a straight conversion of the original with no meaningful additions and only a few limitations based on the 5th edition treasure layout. The appendices are pretty straightforward. Appendix A gives 5th edition stats and details for uh, the new monsters, a fair number of which are actually just conversions of classic D&D &D and Mistara era monsters that were new in that they originated in this module. There are a few completely new ones, however, as well as a few conversions of classic monsters that actually weren't in the original module, but added as part of the quote-unquote new content. Appendix B starts with a background of the Amber family as a whole, and for the first time explicitly spells out what caused the curse of Stephen Amber, at least what I think is the first time which before was available, but it was mostly available in bits and pieces here and there. Each of the members of the Amber family are statted out here in the original and NPC stat blocks 
was only a few lines long, so it was placed in line in the text, but, well, 5th edition is 5th edition and requires a fairly sizable block of text. This does actually offer opportunity for illustrations of each family member, as well as some background information that probably would not have fit in the original module. Appendix C covers new magic items, a few of which are actually classic items that didn't get converted into the main 5th edition DMG, while a few are actually unique to this adventure. This includes a few items that were room-specific in the original adventure, but are broken down here to be more general magic items in case, you know, they should find their way into the pockets of the characters somehow. Appendix D is the Hunting Lodge, and it is a new dungeon located in the hill in the indoor forest area of the main adventure. It represents the only new content that has been set apart in its own section, as was more often the case in other original adventures reincarnated products. It does have a tie-in with an existing event in the main chateau, so there is that. The lodge itself isn't actually all that big, being just over a dozen rooms all in all with a nice isometric map there, maybe not as nice as the prior ones. Appendix E has handouts that can be copied and printed for the players, mostly just a map of the province of Averonia and a few important documents that the characters can uncover during their time in the chateau. And then finally, Appendix F, covers all of the new maps. And by new maps, I mean both brand new maps and new versions of old maps. So you've got, you know, a good collection of decent quality artwork maps. <sighs> so, what do I think? Well, physically, the book's about as durable and easy to use as the prior ones. It'll look nice on my shelf, and it's easy enough to open and reference as any of the prior entries into the original Adventures Reincarnated series. I do adore the interior cover art by Kovacs, and actually I would love to have a print of that up for my wall somewhere. That's just, that's just really nice. It's kind of like a mix of whimsical and gothic all at once. Uh, and, you know, I honestly... You know, I gotta say the art actually the new art doesn't actually play that much of a, a role in in this adventure. It's just nice to look at. As far as the actual contents, uh, well, as always, there's a couple things to consider here: the fifth edition conversion in and of itself, and then the additional materials. Now, the fifth edition conversion, as always, is excellent with just enough of that old school feel that it retains the same encounter structure and story of the original but with the benefit of slightly more modern layout and uh, some statting issues. The writing is excellent, and I didn't actually notice any serious editing problems in terms of mechanics, but honestly, Goodman Games is usually spot on about editing in terms of major releases. I haven't had any, con I haven't had any problems, as I might have with a number of other companies. However, as for the other extras, compared to the prior offerings in the original Adventures Reincarnated series, the, some of them were somewhat disappointing. There just wasn't a whole lot of new insights in terms of the background and scholarly material. I suppose that's partly because of the fact that you can only talk about one designer's method so much, and this is the second book that they've done by Tom, uh, by Tom Moldway. Uh, the, the fact that the Tom Moldway title has already out covered that, it does limit new material. So most of it just ends up talking about Clark Ashton Smith, which itself is an interesting subject, but the articles and the introduction just come off as a little bit redundant. I think this is kind of exacerbated by the fact that there's a few articles in a row by the same authors, so they tend to sound like they're just saying the same thing, just in a slightly different way. So it, it's, it feels a little bit like filler. While I appreciate the new content and the fact that it's woven in without a notation or a bit of a is, is, that's a bit of a curious choice for me. In prior versions of Original Adventures Reincarnated, most of the new content was at least set aside in its own section or marked as such. The fact that one extra dungeon is actually set apart in its own appendix, despite being directly connected to the previous area, just like the other new material, while the other new material is just put in line without any notification, is a little bit of a perplexing choice. I'd rather have seen all of one or all of the other, but this kind of mix is, is, is kind of off-putting a little bit. There's also the gatefold maps, which, I, I, gotta, I, gotta, I gotta be honest, they're a little bit odd. Let's go ahead and take a look at them. Let's go ahead and take a look at them, because it, it's like, in the original, let's, let's mark this page real quick. 
in the original, I understood the gatefold map. The gatefold map is supposed to represent, you know, the interior cover of the old module, which often had a flip side. So what you had was, I believe it would it would actually be bound like this with a seam so this would be your front page and it would have that and then it would go directly into it on the facing page i'm not entirely sure if that's how it's laid out but i believe that's how it's supposed to do well the map itself was seamless but the issue is is with this particular release the seam goes right through the middle of the map so that kind of defeats the purpose of that i would rather have seen like this this title up here and this fold out this way and that might have made more sense i don't know if it's like that in the original module but that's okay because if you look at it you've got a interior title that you're not going to reference during play you got your map all in one go and then you're good to go and you can just use the rest of it as a book but if you look at the new gatefold map like the new one now this they redesigned it they wanted to capture that same feel they've got a similar kind of art although it's different Again, they put the the spread map over the crease, over the fold in the page, so you're, you end up, you know, not able to access it a whole lot like that. But then, curiously, instead of like an interior cover, like an interior cover that you're not going to reference, they printed an actual page. There's a page of content there. So you, in order to access that content, you have to fold out that gatefold page, and that's going to make for some... That's going to be an issue going forward, because if you access this page too much, since it is a gatefold, it will start tearing. That is going to be an issue there. That's, I don't like that, that choice of design. There's probably got to be a reason for it. But again, that would have been so much better if they'd put that seam here on the binding and then had the map fold out instead. And I, 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 maybe, maybe the original was like that. I don't know. I never owned the original, but I do find that a very curious choice. So, you know, that's going to be my main complaint. It's just an odd choice. I did like some of the new sidebars. I really did. There's notes on the scale of the place, and that does a lot towards making it feel like a more realistic sort of castle. Since you honestly don't wander around a place, even a massive chateau with like 80-foot-long bedrooms and the like, unless it's royal palace tiles type stuff. And even then, 80 foot is pushing it. Furthermore, as I mentioned in the beginning, I actually had very little experience with Castle Amber before reading this, so the similarities between this and Ravenloft were absolutely astonishing to me. And they did touch upon this in the in the write-up. Uh, it just... It, it, it just... You know, you have this... In both modules, you have this poison mist that can trap the group in an area, a sort of mysterious medieval castle to explore, and a hex crawl area that's around, in Ravenloft's case, it's outside. In Castle Amber's case, it's actually like a sublevel, And uh, poke around and find other mysterious things. The idea that Averonia may be its own demiplane of dread is definitely workable in that regard, and I think that the connection was kept in mind when some of the additional material was designed, at least in terms of the new, the new Goodman Games material. It's a choice that I can appreciate, although, of course, Clark Ashton Smith's works tend towards a more sort of Lovecraftian eldritch strangeness with a touch of gothic horror in some instances rather than the other way around, like Ravenloft does. Overall, I gotta admit, although I was disappointed with the scholarly commentary this time around, the strength of the module itself just carries the overall value of this book. In prior volumes of this series, I always said that you had to balance whether you were buying it for the conversion or for the new material or the extras, like the background and such. With this particular one, with Castle Amber, the latter really doesn't factor in. The new material is not worth... The, 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 the new scholarly material isn't worth the cover price. The new additional material for the adventure might be the 5th edition conversion in the new material, that's where your all your value of this book is going to be. So when you're looking at this book, think of it more like a typical conversion rather than a mix, like, like a collector's mix, like you would have seen with the other books. And uh, in that regard, I, I think it's worth the price. But then again, I may be a little bit biased just because I like that sort of theme. So with the addition of the second story to the Chateau, it's more than a simple conversion, although I'm not sure you can make it into a full campaign like you could potentially do with the material in the Isle of Dread one and the Lost City conversions. Then again, this is a more focused adventure feel that may better suit some groups that really don't, don't really 
go for that full exploration style campaign. And I, that's something to be said for that. It offers a little bit of variety in that regard. At any rate, I think I'm going to wrap this one up on that note. This has been the RPG Crawler with my review of Original Adventures Reincarnated, number 5, Castle Amber. I'll toss a link to where you can pick it up somewhere below. If you like what you've seen, remember to leave a like, comment if you got any feedback, and subscribe for uh, more RPG-related content, both tabletop and computer. Until next time, take care and goodbye.